Today, we're covering self-joins in SQL through three different examples. These are the type of questions you're going to either find in an interview or tasks that you're going to be asked at your daily job as a data analyst or a data scientist. Now, before I jump on my computer and show you guys these examples, essentially what a self-join is, let's say you're doing a select star from table A. Well, you can have a join below also to table A, and this allows you to extract more data. So you can either have like a left join or an inner join, it just kind of depends on the result data set that you specifically need. No, it sounds complicated. It is a little bit, but it'll be much easier once I show you how to do this. Okay, so our first example is consecutive numbers. Sometimes you see these kind of like an interview type questions or an elite code. And we have a table that I created called consecutive numbers. We have IDs one through nine, and then we have numbers five all the way through 11 over here with the highest being 21. Now the goal is to find two numbers that are the same. You can see here, three, four, 16, 16, 7, 8, 18, 18. And there's a few different ways you could solve this. Yeah, you could solve it with lead lag functions, but I wanted to show you guys how you could do this also uh, through a self join. And this is a good example. So the first thing I would recommend doing is having a table alias over here. So we have consecutive numbers. I'll just say CN1, and that way we can differentiate our first table versus our second. And if you have three in a row, you might want to do a third table like CN2 and CN3, but that gets a little bit complicated. We can definitely do that in another video. So what I'm going to do is copy this over here. I'm going to enter join. And then I'm going to put this just like this. So we're interjoining because we want to make sure that these numbers are going to be the same. And we're on CN2. And now let's how we're going to now let's look at how we're going to join these. So we want to join these on the IDs, but we want CN2 to look at one spot lower. So if CN1 is on ID one, we want CN2 to be looking on ID two for that number. So all you have to do is on and say cn1.id equals cn2.id plus one. And I'm just gonna run a select star so you guys can see how this works. And right, we have ID two, then we have ID one, ID three, ID two, ID four, ID three, which is great. Because now all we have to do is make sure that these columns here are the same. Now I can put a where clause down below, um, but you could also add in technically a where clause with inner joins and that's the better route to go. So all I have to do is and cn1.num is equal to cn2.num. And if we run this now, you can see that we have number 16 and then we have number 18. But if we were just looking for the specific numbers, all you have to do is just grab one of these over here. So if I do cn1.num and put this over there, now we just see the numbers 16 and 18, which is really cool to see because now we've filtered it down. So to explain this one last time, we're selecting the specific number that appears two times in a row. We have our consecutive numbers table, but we're interjoining consecutive numbers too. Now, since it's inner join, it's only going to show the results that are the same in both tables. So we have cn1.id equals cn2.id plus one. So that way cn1 looks at the top row, cn2 looks at the bottom row. And then we're looking where the number on this column over here is the same as number on version two. And because of that, we only output 16 and eight. Let's comment this out over here and take a look at the next example. Okay, so for number two, we're taking a look at a parent-child relationship. So this one, I have a person ID, then I have the name of the individual, and then I have the parent ID over here. So for this example, the parent is 12, which would be kid. In this example two, the parent would be Nolan. And all these names are just picture names that are backwards, which is kind of cool. All right, so how we're gonna build this out is unlike the first one where we had an inner join, we're gonna do a left join. And the reason is, is if you look at this parent ID column, a lot of these are null. And if we have an inner join, not all the results are gonna be shown. And we wanna have all the results shown properly. So let's have a left join. 
Now I named this one PC1 already. So we're just gonna copy this over here. Let's add in our left join and name it as PC2. So now let's think about how we're gonna build out this left join. So we wanna have all of this the same and then attach over here to the right additional information. So how we're gonna do this is on PC1 dot parents ID equals PC2 dot person ID. And that way, again, 12 over here will show as kid and then two over here will show as Nolan and then replicate this table over here to the right. So let's just grab that. And now you can specifically see person ID, name, parent, person ID, name, and parent ID, where we have kid over here, Nolan here, Ryan there, young, and also Walter. So we can do a lot more than just a select star. So let's say we wanted to have the name of a person. So we'll just say PC1.name. And then we also wanted to have the parent name. So all we have to do is PC2.name and then as parent name. And if we do that specifically and run this over here, you can see Ryan Kid, Cy Nolan, Sandy Ryan, Tim Young, and Nichols Walter but we still have all of these nulls over here. And how you can get rid of the nulls, pretty easy, is you can do is null, throw that in there, and then just like this. And if I run this again, you can see that those are blank and our table looks a lot nicer. So again, I'll explain how this works. So we're just selecting the name from our parent child we're grabbing the parent child two name, which is down over here. We're selecting it from our parent child table. We're joining on over here where the parent ID is equal to the person ID. So that way we only show the parents over here. And then we just name this column as parent name. And we're on to example number three. So in this example, we're taking a look at the career stats of Nolan Ryan, and I wanna compare a few different stats on the same years where Nolan Ryan had the same amount of wins. So in this example, you can see in 1968 and 69, Nolan Ryan had six wins. So I would like to compare those two years. If we go down below over here. You can see 1980 and 81, Nolan Ryan had 11 wins in both of those seasons. So I would like to compare that as well. So let's start solving this. So I'm going to name this table NRYCS1 or something like that. I don't know. And then we're gonna do a second over here and we're gonna do an inner join over there because we only wanna compare directly these. And then we'll have this as two. Now think about how you're gonna build out this specific join. If you wanna pause the video, feel free to, not follow wrong. So what I'm gonna do is on nrts1.w equals and now we need to also add in a clause so that way it just doesn't join to the same exact year twice. So how I'm gonna do that, and excuse my typo on there, is say and, and do the years like this, is not equal to other one. And I also want to clean up this select star. I only want to show a few different fields because if you look at this table, it is quite long. So what I would like to show is we're going to first grab dot year. Let's grab the wins. Let's grab ERA. Let's also grab games, which is G. And let's also grab whip and let's also grab strikeouts which is so i'm gonna do the same exact thing for the second season which we're going to compare so just copy this over here let's make all of these two and move that comma at the end and this should give us our results and real quick before you guys run this i made a small typo make sure that this is two not 1.w equals 1.w. That way we're comparing the two different win seasons. Um, anyways, back to the video.
All right, so once we run this over here, we have the specific years. So you can see 1968, six games won, 1969, six games. Then we have 69, which compares 69 to 68. 71 compares to 78. 71 over here also compares to 85, where there is 10 wins. And uh, it's pretty cool. You can compare season over season where the win column is the same and compare stats like, for example, the whip over here was 1.25 compared to 1.26 over there, 1.58 compared to 1.41. If I was in this out of work project, I would want to have all these as specific names, but it can be vague. Like if you're looking at ERA here compared to ERA over there, it can get confusing for people. But just in this example, this is how you can build one out. Hope you learned something new in this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe. By the way, you should go watch this video on lead and lag functions. That way you don't have to use self-joins as much.